We're live. You want to say hello? Kia ora. Welcome. I'm Helen Brahms coming to you live from Mesa in, in where am I? Arizona. That's right. And I am here with my cohort, my traveling companion, my co-captain. Come here. You want to say hi to everybody? Put your head up and say hi. No. She's just been very cuddly today. She's been having an awesome day today. So how has your day been? <laughs> now she wants to play. Yeah, you get some scratches. You get scratches. You've had a fun day today, haven't you? Yes. We've been outside. The postie stopped off at the door and gave her a treat today. So she got a treat from the mail person. What else? You got to play ball. You see, she's been outside chasing her Kong around. Um, what else have you done today? Slept. Yes, you've done a lot of that. And you've looked out the window today at your favorite window. You had snuggles and cuddles and scratches. Yeah. What else you had? You had some treats? Yes, we had treats today. So Zephy's had a very good fun day today. So how was your day? We've had a lot of fun here today. Um, let's see, what have we done today? We got to have some awesome meetings, got to make some great connections with somebody who specializes in Paris. And um, sorry, she's trying to push stuff off the table now and bite my hand at the same time. No, we don't do biting, no biting. Hey. Close the door. Mm. Um, let's see. So we got to have a great, um, great connection with somebody called Paige, who um, um, is a tour operator for Paris. So she does pa Paris by Paige and does these amazing adventures to Paris and France, and um, uses local knowledge that she gained when she lived there for three years. She also has a master's in French. So I was kind of like a very, very interesting person to connect with and we have a lot of hey whoa sorry <laughs> pour on table pushing piles of books yeah we just about ended up with the fan and other things down on the floor um so very great we had a great conversation a great connect today so that was awesome and the rest of the day i have been spinning let's see with um we watched a little bit of genealogy road show got to see um i think it's like the fourth or the fifth episode in season one we watched that while we were having lunch today, and there was a story there about a woman who um, found a, somebody had already done some family tree genealogy, but she wasn't sure how accurate it was, and so wanted it verified and everything. And so they did verif so they did some verification because her relative who had done it had um, thought that they were able to trace back their family to the Mayflower. And as the genealogist, as the genealogist suggested, you have over three million people in the U.S. who claim to be descended from somebody on the Mayflower, whereas the Mayflower um, actually only had 125 people on it, and 45 of those pe so 45 people perished not long after they came to the they came to the U.S. So, um, so there's actually only whatever 45 minus 20 125 is um, left that you could be related to. So they did the research. They went back and they did all the research and everything, and found out she wasn't related to one person on the Mayflower. She was related to four people on the Mayflower. And she explained, you know, there was a lot of interbreeding then at that, at that time. Um, but yeah, so she was related to four people on the Mayflower. And because of that, um, the genealogist pulled out the Mayflower Silver Book. And the Mayflower Silver Book is, um, it starts with the families that came here to the U.S. on the Mayflower and traces them for five generations within the U.S. And so gave her a copy of the book. And it's like a four inch thick book. It's called the Silver Book. And... Um, she got told too that she was now a member of the Mayflower Society. So that was kind of cool. And if you're hearing thumping noises, Zephy's deciding to do her zoomies up and down the RV. I don't know. It's her thing. Um, so that was really cool. And then there was another woman who was related to Sam Houston. And um, because she was related to Sam Houston, she was also related to um, the then governor of Texas at the time whose name I can't remember when this was filmed and um, so I can't remember the governor's name because they were also related to Sam Houston as well so that she had that connection there so it was kind of cool going back um, and finding out all of this information and everything else and then oh the one that was with the Mayflower she had had a great great grandfather who had shot his wife and after being put into an insane asylum had um, on his third attempt at committing suicide, he actually was successful with that. 
but they traced it back and one of the things that they learned about when they did the backstory and stuff is they were talking about Gettysburg and talking about the Civil War. Hey, come here. Oh, sorry, we want butt scratches now. She's just <laughs> backed up against my leg and she was whining because she wanted butt scratches. Um, um, but they were talking about how um, with Gettysburg and the Civil War, that was the first time they looked at the psychology of the effects of war on those who survived, who fought in the battles and survived. And that was the first time they looked at the psychological effects. So she said, so back then, um, this woman's great, great, great grandfather could very well have been suffering from PTSD. And it was traced all the way back that that's some of possibly the effects. But this is the first time they started studying the psychology of those who fought in, in wars and battles and things and survived and how their mental health was afterwards. So that was kind of interesting to learn the backstory behind that. So um, as the genealogist said, you know, the, um, the PTSD thing could be going back centuries, but it wasn't until the Civil War that they actually started studying um, that sort of, those sorts of effects on people. So it was kind of interesting learning about that and because you kind of wonder you know, this PTSD thing cannot be a new thing for those who are who have seen war. It cannot be a, it cannot be a new thing. Um, it's got to have been around for a while, but it wasn't until the eighteen was eighteen sixties the Civil War was um, that you know until the Civil War they actually started studying that. So whether other countries had started doing studies into it prior to that, I don't know. But they were just talking about here in America with the Civil War um, and that sort of thing. So. Um, it was very interesting to learn that she had this tragedy in her family, but at the same time, that she was a descendant from four different people on the Mayflower. So that was kind of cool. Um, and there were some other really interesting stories in there. They even had an NFL player, a, no, yeah, former NFL player. He actually has a yellow jacket. He's in the so he's in the NFL Hall of Fame. He's also in the College Hall of Fame. He's a Heisman Trophy winner, and I can't for the life of me think of his name now. I knew I should be writing this stuff down when I watch it. But he wanted to know about his dad's side of the family because he didn't know a lot about his dad's side of the family. His dad um, died when he was in third grade, I think it was, third or fourth grade. So he wanted to learn a little more about his dad's side of the family. So they were able to learn some more about that and to find out that his dad actually fought in World War II and was on, um, in the, he was World War II, he was in the army and even during World War II, they had the color segregation because he was African-American. And so they were talking about the segregation that was going on then at the time. And so he was in the army and part of the flying squad from the army. Yeah, because they were all, they were, all the photos they showed were, were them standing in front of planes. Um, come here. She's annoyed because I'm giving you guys attention and not her. Um, so it was very interesting that he was able to find out that part of his family, his history and take some of the pride in the fact of um, some of the stuff that his dad did and how his dad was a, um, for a, you know, one of the first to go there and he was a hero and all that sort of thing. So that was kind of cool to, um, to hear those sorts of stories. I love stories like that. Um, but I'm finishing research, I'm working on the fourth generation for a client right now and um, and uh, so we're working on the great great grandparents and we have found four of the 16 so far so we're doing good and uh so we're just going to keep plugging away at that and i've got a meeting getting the meeting set up with the client for next week because they aren't able to do it they weren't able to do it today because they're busy busy packing and stuff and so we're going to have a look at that next week with them and so i'll be able to go through the whole thing but she told me um that there were rumors in her family that she was related to a certain person in history and the last name has come up as one of the great, great grandparents maiden names. So one of the great, great grandmother's maiden names. And um, so now once I find the, uh, the rest of the, once I find all 16 great, great grandparents, then I'm gonna go back and research that last name a little more to see if there is a connection to that person in history. So it's kind of exciting because I haven't had to do one of those before, so. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. So I'm not going to rush it. I'm still going to take my time, do the research, not go blazing and just, oh, yep, that name fits, that name fits. No, we're still doing the research. We're making sure that the connections are the connections that they're supposed to be. Um, people get a little confused because like on Ancestry and My Heritage and other sites like that, they have like 
a little green leaf that comes up or a little marker of some sort on Ancestry, it's a little green leaf that comes up next to a person's name and it's a hint that these records could be related to this person. But other people go, oh yeah, the name matches, the birth date looks around, right, click, 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 click. Yeah, you can't do that. You have to research the hints. So when they give you the hints, yes, some of them are blazingly obvious that that is the right person. Other ones take a little more time. For example, on this one that I'm researching, hey, that's enough. Um, her grandfather had a name, and I thought, well, that's not, the last name could be a little common, yes, but the first name with the same middle initial, um, so we have the first name and the middle initial thing, and I thought, well, that's not a usual combination, um, so that could be, but then I found out that there were actually two babies born within a year or two of each other, both of them had different parents um, that named their children the same as far as the first name and the initial and the initial for their middle name goes. I have yet to find a record that tells me what that middle initial stands for. But of course they married different people. But they happened to marry um yeah no they married different people. So um I was trying to remember if that was the one that had the similar wives names. But no that's down one of the other one of the other leagues. Um, so you have to be careful because yes this marriage record came up and I knew who what the wife's name was so that was a big help because I was able to say, yes, that's the right one. And then I found his name again. I thought, well, hang on, it's got this marriage certificate over here. And they got married within four years of each other. And I'm like, well, did, was there a divorce going on in here and all that? So I researched a little more between the two guys with the guys' names and everything with their wives' names, found them both on census reports with their kids um, and realized that they were two completely different families. Yes, they had the same, they had... Their name was written the same, first name, middle initial, last name, exactly the same, and it was not a common first name. So um, it was sort of like, okay. And it was just another reminder to me that there are times you've got to be, you can't just go and go, oh, it's a it's an unusual name, so therefore all those ones must be related. Yeah, no, that doesn't work. Um, even if you're thinking that as well, oh, it can't be that common, a, common of a name, so we can, yeah, no, that doesn't quite work. You really do have to do the research. And, uh, and figure out which is the right one. And if you don't know the spouse's names, then you have to dig a little deeper to find out more about the person that you're researching and find out another way on how did they get, you know, when did they get married. So then we go to census records and we look through the census records and do they have the child's name that you're looking at that you're researching? Because you start with what you know and you work your way backwards with what you don't, towards what you don't know. Um, and so then you go back a generation, okay, now we'll start looking for that child again. We need to look for the parents. So where on the census does that person end up on the census? How many, you know, in the same year, how many different census records are they on? Okay, we've got like, they're on, you know, we've got that same first and last, first and last name on a census on three or four different census records. Okay, now we're gonna look at the parents that are listed on that census record. Who are the parents? And we start doing processes of elimination, but you really gotta get in there, dig in there, and um, make sure that the person uh, that before you accept any hints that whichever software program that you are using pops up to say hey we have a record here that could be a connection hey this is a pot remember these are possible connections they are possible records for people in your tree they may not be an exact match so you have to be very careful with that um, and dig a little deeper to find out which of the records are the correct ones that you should be putting into your tree and using as a source for information. So that's my little tip today, which I didn't realize I was going to do. It just flowed out there. But anyway, um, that's us for today, for this Friday. All of our projects are done for the week. Um, our to-do list is done for the week. What are we going to do this evening, Zeph? Should we watch a movie? Because our to-do list got done today. Let's see what she's going to do. Should we watch a movie tonight? You want to go for a walk first, though, don't you? a lot of expressions, eh? Sweetie girl. Hey. Eyes. Up here. Eyes. Hey. All the way over here. Come here. Are you stopping and looking at yourself, are you? Are you looking at yourself? See? Can you see yourself there? <laughs> so from Zephy and I, have a super fantastic sparkling evening, and we will catch you guys tomorrow morning for Shake It Up Saturday. Hey, Conera.